Welcome to the WP Tonic This Week in WordPress and SaaS podcast, where Jonathan Denwood interviews the leading experts in WordPress, e-learning, and online marketing to help WordPress professionals launch their own SaaS. Welcome back, folks, to this month in WordPress and Tech Roundtable show. Uh, a little bit diminished this month. Hopefully, some of the normal panel will be joining us during the show. Um, we've got a great guest, though. We've got Jeff Chandler, formerly the editor of WP Tavern. Um, it's going to be great having a quick chat with Jeff about the latest WordPress and tech stories of the month. Like I say, I hope the rest of the panel join us. This is episode 768. Um, so, Jeff, would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners and viewers? Uh, yeah, thank you for the invite and uh, for having me on the show today. Um, Interesting that we're doing a roundtable and I'm the only one here. Uh, that that makes me the most responsible. And you know, after 700 episodes, you think people would get it by now. But uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I can dig on them because they're not here to defend themselves. So that's their fault, not mine. But uh, yeah, my name is Jeff Chandler. I've been involved in the WordPress space since uh, about 2006, 2007. But I didn't get my first sort of writing gig in the WordPress space until about 2008, and then things really took off for me. When I founded WP Tavern in 2009, which became one of the uh, biggest communities around WordPress that was not inside of WordPress.org, where I wrote a bunch about WordPress, the community. We had the community forum. Um, the who's who in WordPress at that time was on the forum. It was, it was a really cool time for me and a lot of a lot of other people because we sort of all discovered WordPress and were working with it and learning it around the same time. So we were, there were, there were really no experts. We were just all helping each other and, and sharing articles and code snippets and just our experiences. And, you know, there's so many times where I reminisce and I'm like, can we go back to those days? But those days are, are kind of long gone. And, and there's a lot of people from back then that I just, they just disappeared and they moved out of WordPress or they moved on to something else. And a lot of times I'm like, Hmm, I wonder where they went. But now Fast forward to today, and I am a marketing generalist at Stellar WP. So I work with the events calendar brand, LearnDash, and some of the other products uh, that we host. Uh, Stellar WP being an umbrella company for all of these WordPress products that we have and brands. And then our parent company is, of course, Liquid Web. And it just turns out that all of my years of writing about WordPress, uh, unbeknownst to me, uh, has prepared me for this role. And I'm, I've, I really enjoy my role and being able to be in a position to where I can, um, I can take action and improve products uh, from the, from the other side of the coin, you know, at the tavern, when I was writing about things. It was always after the fact. Well, now I, I'm behind the scenes. I get to see how the gears turn, how the teams work together, how we release products. And I can actually help uh, consumers. I can help our customers and it's been a really great experience so far. Are you looking for ways to make your content more engaging? Sensei LMS by Automatic is the original WordPress solution for creating and selling online courses. Sensei's new interactive blocks can be added to any WordPress page or post. For example, interactive videos let you pause videos and display quizzes, lead generation forms, surveys, and more. For a 20% off discount for the tribe, just use the code WPTONIC, all one word, when checking out and give Sensei a try today. Hi there, folks. It's Jonathan Denwood here, and I want to tell you about one of our great sponsors, and that's Zolo.com. If you got a WordPress website, a membership website, and you're looking to link it with a great financial management package, Zolo can provide this solution. So all your bookkeeping needs are done through Zolo. If you need new inbox email functionality and you don't want to pay the high charges that Google will charge you, Zolo offers a great email inbox platform. They've got over 
50 apps and services that all integrate fantastic with WordPress at great value levels. And they almost always offer a fully functioning free product as well. So it's just amazing value. Also, if you're a WordPress developer or agency owner, Zolo are looking for great partnerships in the WordPress space. To get all this information, all you have to do, folks, is just go over to Zolo.com and they have the products that you're looking for. Thank you so much, Zolo, for supporting WP Tonic and the Machine Membership Shows. It's much appreciated. That's great. And I've got my, um, I've got Kurt, my normal regular. Would you, <laughs> would you like to introduce yourself, Kurt? Sure, Jonathan. Uh, my name is Kurt, Kurt Von Annen. I own an agency called Manana Nomas. I specialize in membership and learning websites. Uh, also work with the Lifter LMS crew and folks at WP Tonic. It's a pleasure to be on the show. And we have Spencer, but he's, I'm not sure if he's here or not. Uh, I just spilled my cup. <laughs> he spilled his cup. Yeah, do we actually right. have Spencer? <laughs> All right. Um, let's go straight into it, folks. We've got some great WordPress and, like I say, text talk. Oh, <laughs> and he's trying to disrupt this podcast very effectively. Um, so let's go straight into it. So number one story is, um, it was like a blast from the past, this story, actually. Um, it was on the tavern. WordPress contributors demand transparency, objective guidelines, listings, recommendation on the hosting page. This is a tradition from the tavern, these very long titles, but there we go. Um, <laughs> so, Jeff, my my initial reaction, it, this, it was like go back in a time machine with this story. Actually, there's a link to a story that you wrote when you were <laughs> editor of the tavern from uh, 2015. Was that was your response when you read this? Uh, my response was, well, I initially discovered through the grapevine that SiteGround had been removed from the recommended hosting page, which means there's only two left. And it's no big surprise. If you go back to, I, that might've been the 2015 article, um, SiteGround, it's not the first time they've been removed. And then a few days later, they were put back on. But the thing with the recommended hosting page is that nobody has a clue except Matt Mullowig as to what it takes to be on that page um, it just generates conspiracy theories about how much money is exchanging hands from those hosts to be on that page. There's no transparency. And with it only, there's, there's more than two web hosts out there that deserve to be on that page who are doing wonderful things, not just at, the, not just with their company, but contributing back to WordPress. And I will say that there is some action afoot with some documents and things that will be talked about with the hosting group, uh, at, the Community Summit, which takes place just before WordCamp US in the middle of August, around August 25th. And the goal is to redo the form and the survey form. And Matt Mulloweg wants to try and get people on that hosting, people or companies on that hosting page that contribute the most back to WordPress. And I think that's going to be one of the uh, top tier things to be listed on that page. <laughs> All right, yeah. So, um, Spence, it, it must have been a, a blast in the past. It had your friend Otto, the Sid Lord of WordPress, oh. our, um, our um, old friend of yours. Our, um, I, I, read, <laughs> I, I just chuck, chuckled as I read this post, actually. First of all, I want to say, hi, Jeff Rowe, of all the WordPress peoples that I've known the name of for 18 years. You're the one of the last I've not met. I hope I can, oh. are you, are you going to be in Maryland? I'm not going to be at WordCamp US this year. The closest I'll be is WordCamp Rochester, New York at the end of September. Well, maybe next time. It was nice to meet you, finally. Um, okay, so I just want to announce that I'm calling for a congressional hearing uh, to finally get to the bottom of the WordPress recommended hosting pages. As an aside, although it's not a topic today, I do find it interesting because I'm a big believer in all this stuff that we yesterday had some interesting news, not the least of which was that Live congressional hearings where they just finally came out and said, we have contact with other civilizations, we have ships and bodies, and it got buried under 800 <laughs> other things, not the least of which was Sinead O'Connor dying, Mitch McConnell freezing up. It was like everybody was just 
hello, we just, the most important thing of our entire civilization, and everyone's nonplussed. It was even below Matt Mullenweg's announcement of the contributor page. Exactly, exactly. So let's just put it like this. Conspiracy theories aside, although I like Jeff's choice of words there, <laughs> let's just call it Occam's Razor. Mullenweg doesn't want to put anything on that page that doesn't do anything for his investors or himself because there is no objective reason. Uh, again, using just like a, I have a relationship through my past uh, with John Dunwood and so forth, uh, with uh, Jonathan Wald, I mean, with uh, Kevin, who, you know, Ohasi, Ohashi. There's plenty of objective testing resources that could be used as like, here's a resource go to that is like giving you all the car and driver track and field reports of hosting. But they don't do that for the same reason they don't do it on the plugins page or the themes page for the same reason that the core developers keep pulling and pushing and changing the three different interfaces we have between regular Gutenberg, full site editing, that, that. It's a shit show because Mullenweg does not want to do any top-down decisions that benefit the actual community that has been here for 18 years. Instead, it is just the same politics that we see, like, no offense, but like Mitch McConnell literally having a stroke. And instead of them calling ambulances, they just kind of like move his 80-year-old body aside and then start talking for him because they need his body in place to keep a majority. It's nonsense. And why can't we just call it nonsense now? Because it is. Oh, well, well, I'm a yeah, yeah. In my opinion than I've, Jeff I've, seen, I've, I've seen this movie before. It's called Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they could literally do that for either the WordPress decision team or they could do it for one of the politicians. They could literally put a Matt Mullenweg in front of anything and he give the same level of actual interaction because nothing will change from what we all say. And you know what's so disrespectful about it is the threats and the blackmail that come the other direction, like having participated in San Diego WordCamp and hosting a party an hour after the end of the official events and still being threatened from Mullenweg's team about somehow <laughs> that is illegal and the people who are hosting or otherwise sponsoring the party will be blackballed from any participation in future events. Really? In an open source world that you're going to threaten black? So let's just... Do like these people in Congress are doing. Let's put a little crack in the dam between what's really happening and what's being said is happening and say, for the sake of argument, by the way, I love the tavern and I, I, I do like Sarah, yeah. but nobody else publishes there. Yeah. It's just Sarah. Yeah, right. Um, it, it, it's not her fault. I'll just say that. I know it's not her fault because okay. I applied to work there. And after the, <laughs> okay. I literally, she had a job opening and it was yeah. like, yeah. like yeah. LinkedIn yeah. jobs, the That's jobs gonna... that don't exist. That's going to happen. So, um, Jeff, it, it was struck me. It was it was literally a blast. It was a blast from the past, wasn't it? Um, it was. I, I thought there. I thought there had been some active um, publicly to kind of soften the communication. You know, Joe's Vanna. Um, they keep putting her in front of podcasts, and she's running her own podcasts, and then. It's all soft. It's all about community, and and then you get this article. It's it's got everything, isn't it? It's got um, the madness of Matt. It's got the Sid Lord Otto. Uh, um, it's got everything thrown in. It's like uh, it's totally from the past, isn't it, Jeff? In a way, isn't it? Uh, it's it's uh, <laughs> yeah. It's 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 a blast from the pit, you know. So I talked. Way back in the day when Flywheel was founded, Flywheel was doing some awesome things. There was a web hosting company that was founded in uh, Omaha, Nebraska, I believe. And they eventually got Flywheel onto that recommended hosting page. And I had an interview in WordPress Weekly, and I talked to the founder of him, and I said, how much, you know, you're the first person I've had on the show that actually is on that page. So it's great to be able to talk to you. But so he talked a little bit about the process, about the things that he had to go through. And this was, you know, we're talking, you know, eight, nine, 10 years ago, something, something to that effect. But he was telling me there was a lengthy process and things that they had to abide by, which of course, you know, um, the whole thing with, with GPL contributing to WordPress, all that stuff. But he told me that 
being listed on that page drove a significant amount of traffic. It wasn't their main source of customer acquisition, but it was enough to be noticeable. And it was enough. They eventually, eventually Flywheel was removed from that page. And then again, as we see here, fast forward to the day, no one knows why, except Matt. <laughs> you know, so hosts get added, hosts get removed, and the only people who know why is is Matt, and it did, just leads to a lot of people coming up with their own reasons as to why things are the way they are. And then whenever you have people coming up with their own reasons for these things, uh, you get into a lot of fud, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, uh, have you got any can comments? I, can I ask Jeff a question? Yeah. You're, from, you're from Chicago like I am, aren't you? No, no, no. I'm from, uh, I've always been born and raised here in Northern Ohio. You, man, you could definitely be on a Chicago TV show. <laughs> but I love, you, you, I you love Chicago. Like South Sider, like, <laughs> you're from my old neighborhood. Okay. Do, do, you. Does it, are you, uh, I, I'm just going to say, I love Italian beef. I love hot dogs drove through the garden and Lou Malnati's for the win, not Giordano's. Uh, you, all the right answers. No catch up. Okay, uh-huh. thank you. <laughs> no catch up. Uh-huh. We're going to be besties. Can we, oh, yeah. Right, but an right, accent. You're right, you're right off of the... So, um, yeah. Kurt, have you got any um, comment or shall I go on to the next story? My, my comment really is the feedback I'm hearing from the other guests. I mean, you guys are all like fired up and it's funny you know, to hear Spencer talking about Senate hearings and stuff. I mean, it, that, <laughs> you know, taking it to another level... But what what I'm amazed at the lack of the comment was the choices on the page. Like it's like when I see normal political things launched on the news, right? Like like you know it's BS because you're like, who would make such a crazy decision or who would promote such a crazy thing? And it's like out of all the hosting options, these are the two that are on the page, you know. And there's so many other obvious like really great players in the marketplace. So it's like it's like okay, that doesn't make any sense at all. And that's what gets people like that's what spurs these instant conspiracy theories is like, well, those decisions don't make any sense. So he what- doesn't own that page. That's the point. If you go to uh, Wikipedia, people can say yes or no. They can edit it. There's a history of it. But, you know, Matt Mullenweg or whomever is claiming ownership by proxy of that page. That's nonsense. Literally, is it? Well, I mean, it isn't because the reality. The reality nobody can it. change it, can they? Have you, yeah, not yet, all. not yet. But I will say there are things afoot. There's a hosting group, and they're working. They have a survey, and they're going to be talking about this exact thing uh, at the community summit. Now yeah. we'll have to see what the results are of that. If if the status quo gets changed, but but two things real quick. Well, maybe maybe just one. Um, the recommended hosting page, do you think in this day and age that we even need a recommended hosting page? No. Because really uh, some people say yes, because people go to that page and they want to know where should they go to, if they're brand new to WordPress, where should they go to host their website? Okay, I can kind of get that. But if you type in WordPress or best WordPress host, I mean, yes, you probably get a WP Beginner article listing the top 10, you know, oh, don't web hosts. But, but, no, don't, <laughs> sorry. Don't sign <laughs> Sorry. You don't want to get me on a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory conversation. Yeah. Yeah. But but I almost wonder I I almost wonder if we even need that page to begin with. And if we just get rid of it, if we get rid of that page, then we get rid of all the other problems that are associated with that page. I say take your example, compare it to Jonathan. There's only four of us. Chill out. We're gonna talk about it. <laughs> this is relevant. There is Jimmy Wales and Wikipedia <laughs> set up a way that a true democracy of open source software people should have where you want to edit it, you want to contribute it, you change it. There's people who can override you. Even other users can override you. I can't tell you how often I've contributed to a page on Wikipedia and some little 13-year-old overrides me. And I'm like, are you kidding me? But at least it's there in the public. Hey, 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 I'm older than 13. Hey, 12, 13, whatever. (laughs) I'm just saying, if it was done like Wikipedia, which has been a model for what, 20-something years, it would align with the principles that Matt Mullenweg has talked about at every word camp of like open source means da, da, da. Instead, it's in a black box inside of a private equity type of arrangement where maybe it's true that nobody cares about hosting. But you know what is also true? That 99% of the people I've encountered, 40,000 plus people, are confused 
as hell as to even what is .org versus .com and where do I host and what are plugins. The difference between tinkerers and creators is huge. And that is the motivation why they're doing all this crazy shit with changing the core and full site editing and everything. They realize they're 20 years behind every other SaaS company, but yet those pages still exist and people land on them. And so let's talk about a kismet. A kismet used to be free. Now it's charging five bucks, but they still get number one listing in the directory. And that was brought up on one of the contributor pages in WordPress.org. And it was from 12 years ago they've been asking, why is a kismet still listed? Nothing changes because they know why they're not changing it. And that's what pisses me off because they're not being honest. If they came out and said, look, we decided we're going to monetize this and we'll do it the way we want to, at least I accept it. It's like talking to my senator. But the way they're doing it is pretending to be one way in public and another way in private. Yeah, Sorry. just to finish, just to finish off, Jeff, because you know the guy. And I didn't even have my coffee recently. Yeah, this is after. Have, yeah, you let, me have a, you let me have a word, will you? Uh, um, so, Jeff, you know the guy much better than what we do. So, what is this about, old Matt? You know, um, is it, why does he kind of push this community? You know, we're all around the campsite. You know kind of crap where the reality is so obvious that you know he owns everything and everybody has to do what he says basically which is okay isn't it you know i've got no problem with that but I, I always puzzled why he has to push i imagine because he, he gets a lot of benefit from it or do you think the fence or do you think it's tom sawyer or do you think I I can't I can't answer it or speak for Matt. Um, you know it's 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 interesting to a lot of people how the Matt Mulloway you interact with online is can be totally different once you meet him. Once you meet Matt in person, you know it seems like doesn't seem like he is down to earth. You could speak to him. He talks to you. He gives you the time of day. Uh, but, but then you see online Matt and sometimes his words come across the wrong way or you, you, you it's easy to assume bad intentions with what he's saying. Um, I'll just, I'll just end the topic of the hosting and whatever he's doing with this. But if they do revamp the hosting page, what are the odds are that GoDaddy gets listed? <laughs> Negative 1,000. Right. On, okay. on to the next story. So <laughs> uh, uh, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter has changed. It's, uh, it, um, Eton, Elon decided that the Twitter, the birdie, got the kick, and now we've got the X. We've got the X mark. So, Kirk, what, do you, what did you reckon about the X replacing the Twitter? I am one of those folks that's not very critical of Elon Musk because – Time and time again, he continues to surprise me with successes or statements of obvious truth when everybody wants to cover things up. So um, I really appreciate what he does. And, and if he's got the stones to do it and he's got the money to back it up, I really don't have the position to question it. I almost bailed off of, of Larry and, and Twitter as, as an ecosphere. And then all of a sudden I was like, OK, well, now it's getting interesting again. You know, and I've and it's actually been working well for me. So uh, I'm kind of impressed at what he's been able to do with 20 percent of his remaining staff. We'll have to see. We'll have to see how he develops it and moves far, further. If he could really make this, you know, a, a video, a hosting, an audio, a payment platform and, and really do all that. That would be pretty cool, right? But what's the timeline look like and how does adoption look like for the rest oh, of the I think you've got the key there. So, Jeff, obviously, you've got the bizarre um well, in some ways, it's kind of these two stories are linked in a way because you've got two very powerful personalities, haven't you? Um, but the, I think the main thing with all this is that Elon's attempt to turn Twitter in the me short or medium term into a payment gateway, isn't it? This is this is the big. This is the only way the the money that was coughed up can really pay back, isn't it? By trying to turn. X into a payment. I think that's why that's why the, there's been the change of naming in a way because it's linked in attempting to turn this into a, another thing. Really, can you see where I'm coming from, Jeff? Elon is a very smart moron. <laughs> that, that's it. Yeah, that's a, great, that's a great way of putting it, isn't it? <laughs> 
I, I, I've, I've got so much time invested in Twitter. I just, there's a lot of things that he's doing that just make, make no damn sense to me. Like Twitter is a globally recognized brand. You, you, it's there. It's established. Now it's X. What the hell is his fascination with the letter X? You got space X, but now we just have X. And now if you, if you say, if you have a hard X, now we're on shitter and all of our <laughs> tweets are now sheets. So I have no idea well, what, and then you got the Tesla. I don't know. He's a, he's, he's a, he's a smart man in many ways, but in other ways, it's like, I don't know. I could talk to a pet rock and probably get the same kind of response. I, I hate what he's doing to Twitter and it, I, it sucks. I was say, uh, just the naming, or is it just the naming, or can you name a couple other things that have not impressed you? Uh, just uh, the, everything with the, the Twitter blue, and then all the staff getting fired, and then the fail whale showing back up, and then his his different policies. I mean, the one of the dumbest things he ever did was was that weekend where he blocked. You had to actually have a Twitter account. And to be able to see things that were linked out, which sucked because um, in uh, we like to in our company Slack and Stellar, we look at for feedback on Twitter. And we would post those Twitter links into our Slack. But if those people didn't have access to Twitter, they couldn't see what that tweet was unless they had an account. Then on top of that, you had rate limits. Why the hell is he doing rate limits? What, <laughs> what is what is he doing? Is he, I don't know. I just I, I feel like I feel like. Uh, I feel like Elon is going to Burning Man, and the thing they're burning is Twitter. <laughs> All right. So, Spence, what what do you reckon about the renaming of the Twitter bird to the Big X? You know, like with the, I'm sure Jeff figured this out, but like he's come out in the past and explained, like when he did Tesla, it was the Model S, then the Model E, and then the Model oh. X. Oh. I mean, that's not I, I did, like me I making did, this I up. Read an, I did read an article, and apparently it was from like the New York Times. And apparently, there's been some at the head, Twitter headquarters. There's been some offices that have been renamed to like ex ex well, stuff dealing with X that's not really appropriate. But he's like a you know, like you said, moron or another. He's like a five year old in a in a genius's body. And <laughs> when you have the money and you're untethered, and I'm not comparing the two because, like, that explains what happens to all these guys. I mean, look at uh, Jack Dorsey. He's, he's going Howard Hughes, but he still manages to build cool stuff. He just doesn't go necessarily off the ranch. The point is that when billionaires and trillionaires get the leverage of what happens through technology, their normal personalities are magnified in a way that for a human being of normal status would not be noticed by but a few friends, but get noticed by hundreds of millions of people. And that's the kind of weird shit. I feel like his business decisions are sort of like somebody who found themselves stuck with a $44 million clunker. And they, you know, well, I bought that X.com domain way back in 1999. I'm going to use it now. <laughs> like I have one of those types of domains laying around. I'm looking for a business to use. on it. Oh, perfect. I'll show all you guys. But what disappointed me the most was I really felt like before he went off the rails with all this stuff, he was the guy with the solar power, with electric powered cars, getting us into space. And I felt like he actually showed promise for humanity. But now he's so off the rails that it's like... I, I'm, I'm right there with you. Be like before now, his purchase with Twitter and everything, I, I loved what he was doing. Who's going to get us there? I mean, because I want to put a parallel in place. There are plenty of people in the space and ufology and the new age community who are looking at the events of today with like what's really happened with if if all of this is true, which I do believe it is, that there's technology and things about our civilization. He's been allowed to say and do certain things. I'm sure of it. But at the same time, those people have hidden it all from us. And so for the rest of us, we're left to our own devices to figure out what's the future of humanity in a world where the ocean in Florida is 101 degrees and where basic necessities are not being provided for infrastructure or food or kids. And we're all sort of left on this life raft between crazy millionaire trillionaires and politicians and people hiding all this stuff that could. So when you look at the smaller problems, like whether a hosting company ends up on the WordPress.org page, it sort of puts it in perspective. 
But on the other hand, we still got to make a living until the day of rescue or, you know, ultimatum come. So it's frustrating. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we're, I think we're going to go for our mid break, um, and we will be back in a few moments. We we'll see you soon, thanks. Hey, it's Spence from LaunchFlows.com. If you've been looking for a fast and easy way to create powerful sales funnels on WordPress, then look no further than LaunchFlows. In just minutes, you can easily create instant registration, upsells, downsells, order bumps, one-click checkouts, one-time offers custom thank you pages, and best of all, no coding is required. For as little as $50 per year, you can own and control your entire sales funnel machine with Launch Flows. Get your copy today. This podcast episode is brought to you by Lifter LMS, the leading learning management system solution for WordPress. If you or your client are creating any kind of online course training-based membership website, or any type of e-learning project, Lifter LMS is the most secure, stable, well-supported solution on the market. Go to LifterLMS.com and save 20% at checkout with coupon code PODCAST20. That's PODCAST20. Enjoy the rest of your show. We're coming back, folks. Just want to point out that um, we've got some great special offers from our sponsors. Plus, we've got a created list of the best WordPress plugins. So if you're building a website for yourself or for a client, you don't have to troll the internet. They're all being checked over by me truly. To get all these goodies, all you have to do is go over to wp-tonic.com slash deals. wp tonic dot com slash deals and you find all the goodies there what more could you ask for probably a lot because you're a wordpress person so on to, on to the next story um so there's been um you know the big influencers on youtube in the wordpress space have been dropping some videos adam from wp crafter dumped a video this morning um paul from wp tuts great Paul does an excellent job. He did a video. Um, what's coming in WordPress 6.3? Still confusing. Um, like I say, Adam from um, was a bit more upbeat about it. Um, so, Jeff, um, well, you know, I've had a bit of experience in WordPress. I'm, I'm still just a learner at heart, and I'm bloody confused, Jeff. So uh, what what do you think the poor average person dealing with all this, what their state of mind? I, I don't know. I, it, it's, uh, it's interesting because the feedback I've heard from people who are sort of brand new in the WordPress, they get it. There's a black editor. They don't have all of that knowledge and all that tech debt that we understand that we've dealt with all of these years. They have a fresh start. And to them, it's, it's, the WordPress is nice. They got the black editor. They could do this. They can move these things around. They get it. They don't have to, us, we're having to rewire our brains from, from all of these tasks and stuff that we've done over the years in WordPress. And we're trying to switch into the new way of doing things. And, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's it's been difficult as hell. <laughs> right. So, Spence, what did you think of that, the video? That's the, heart, that's the heart of it. Well, you know, Paul and Adam agree with everybody, which is a rare thing as well, because usually, you know, Paul and Adam are really good as YouTube promoters of various things. That's part of their main business stream, and they do a great job. But to get them to agree with something that I agree with, is rare, but the whole point is, Jeff said it so well here, um, 18 plus years history. Like we all drive cars. There's the gas pedal, the brake pedal. If you come up to an octagon that's red with a white line around it, you tend to want to stop, not accelerate. That's how the rules of the road and the machinery allow us all to get to and fro safely. In WordPress, because of this dramatic push, to bring in new technology like React and Node.js and everything else that has, to a certain degree, um, disenchanted those of us who grew up in the amazing PHP, HTML, CSS world of WordPress. Now this new group of kids around the block are like, hey, this is really cool. Look what I can do. Let's gut out short codes. Let's change the core. Let's do this. 
and they're trying to remake an 18 year experience of, uh, of known things into, well, if I reinvented this today, I'd do it like this. And nobody is stopping them. So we got over the three to five years of the Gutenberg drama, finally arrived at classic theme plus Gutenberg blocks with the customizer is Nirvana. You got Jamie, my pal at Poodle Press, who's jumped on the full site editor board, doing a great job saying, no, everybody, let's go to those very unique things called full site editing themes, which mind blown. You have to wrap your head around that that editor doesn't work the same way with the same blocks as the regular post and page editor. Now you got this new thing, like we're going to remake the whole dashboard and all of this shit is going on while the rest of us are trying to explain to our customers who have real businesses. I'm really sorry that your livelihood is at stake now because a bunch of kids over there with no, you know, counselor are, are going crazy in the dashboard. And the only thing I can hope for is that they don't undo any more primary legacy stuff because I'm fine if they leave the legacy stuff in and go forward. But it seems like without parental controls, they're just gutting the core. And that freaks me out a little bit. I, I think what Spencer's saying is he's going to be the primary spokesperson for Classic Press. Not the Classic Press, but the conversation. <laughs> I do want to bring up a version of this. I was talking to uh, Kathy and a bunch of people at your company, and there's plenty of people on my side of the fence who are developers. I like the current state of Gutenberg. I like the Gutenberg editor and the block, everything else. What I don't like is the idea that they're going to break that metaphor and not let us keep it because we finally achieved a place that for me, my message of simplicity is WordPress as a service based on that. And as long as they don't take that away or deprecate that, I don't care what you do, make it pink or purple polka dots, but don't take away what we've taken 18 years to get to because my livelihood does not come from tinkering. It comes from giving people solutions based on the software and nobody shows as much lack of respect for their users as this WordPress last five years. I mean, for real. Hey, hey Kurt, Kurt, I'm just wondering over there at Lifter LMS, uh, how have you guys and gals um, managed documentation between the various interfaces in WordPress? Uh, it's, it's a little bit of a nightmare. Yeah. You know, because, because we're, you know, we're interacting with a lot of people, as you said earlier, you know, on lives and stuff like that. So we do these live support calls on, on, you know, Zoom and other platforms and people ask us stuff on the fly and it's almost like you have to invent it as you go or problem solve it as you go. And then, of course, to your point, you have to figure out, well, how are you going to document that and make that part of the knowledge base moving forward? But, you know, remember, Lifter also released SkyPilot as a full site editing theme this year. So we're right in the thick of it with we have a theme that's in that environment and then we also work well with other, you know, well-developed themes. And so we kind of have to have this, people go, well, how come you don't develop more you know, fancy things for your plugin more regularly. And it's like, because you have to make sure all the stuff is backwards compatible and works on all these things. It's really you have to make sure it works in the classic interface and the block interface. And I'm like, oh, God, can we just have one interface to rule them all? That's all I want. Why That's can't they do it all at an experimental level? Like, for example, here's what I would expect. They could have, would have, should have, because they started with Gutenberg as a plugin. They could have, would have, should have had a plugin you installed that says, I want to use all the experimental shit. <laughs> Done. Instead, they just went like, throw it all overboard and let's start, you know, and that's, we de we dealt with that with classic post editor to Gutenberg. Yeah, uh, but I, I, I think now um, the rest of it is nonsense. But what? I think um, Jamie's, Jamie also published a video this morning as well. And the key bit at the beginning of it is the lack of a doc. Uh, you know, he was even had to admit the total lack of, of people that adopting this to some extent um it's quite evident I, I just think there's a lot of people out there um because they're dealing with real if they're agencies one man agency bigger agency implementers dealing with real people with real businesses this is just what what are, what are they gonna say to real people making a real living through their website come on it's it. like a car like the car like all of a sudden you have to tell people Sorry, we've removed the brake pedal. It's in the back seat. And by the way, the steering wheel turns left, but you go right. And when you come to one of those red octagons, you're supposed to speed up. It's like the rules have just changed because somebody said so. And all the metaphors we've come to know are being disregarded. But why? 
Like, why, why, why? The why? Why did the where did the reindeer sleep, Santa? Like, the kids. It sounds, like, sounds like Spencer just described a self-driving Tesla. <laughs> yeah, but look at look at how that's look, but, but that's actually a great metaphor because Jeez. look how that's working out. Like. The, the, the lawsuits and the debates and the safety considerations, it'd be amazing to go from, oh, let's do this to like self-driving Teslas. But guess what? They can't, even though they tried, because a lot of people were being run over and accidents and liabilities. Here, there's no sort of safety controls or regard for people's businesses or livelihoods, even though it's well known. That's what they're promoting it to be. All I mean, right, on, on, you know. on to the next one. I'm going to drop. Story four, because I put that in for Heather. Unfortunately, Heather couldn't make it even. Um, she's had some technical difficulties. Um, she's on, on way in somewhere. Um, so I'm going to go, to, and Jeff needs to go off soon to do another better podcast. But <laughs> so, uh, um, so let, let's, go, let's go on to story five, Oppenheimer, the film. Um so um, I saw it. Uh, I saw it on fr- uh, on Sunday, and um, I obviously I've I've read a few books about Mr. Heimer's life, and I knew quite a bit. It is a fantastic film. I, I thought the first ten fifteen minutes of it were a bit of a hot mess, and in a bizarre way, um, being that you're dealing with such a kind of crazy life and so many themes free this is going to sound bonkers trying to put it all into three hours three <laughs> hours um that you know it was okay for me because i knew a lot of the background material but it's a bit like wordpress if you know the background you're okay but you know but uh, jeff disagrees he thinks the editor's fantastic if you're a newbie so maybe it's me uh, um so I don't know if you've seen it, Jeff Oppenheimer. And what 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 were some of your thoughts, if you have? Um, I have not. I, I'm planning to go see it Saturday. Um, I don't know much other than it just looks like a great movie. However, I have read the various threads, and apparently, there's a lot of the story. There's a lot of the story that didn't make it in there. First of all, it affects the Japanese people so much, and there's no mention or of Japanese people at all <laughs> in the movie. And then second, there's the story of what happened to all the people who were already living on that land that they took over for the test site, the Hispanos. And it's a that side of the story is terrible. Uh, but you know, if if you just look at Oppenheimer itself, the movie, it's it, it looks pretty darn good. But I encourage everybody to look beyond that, look at the events surrounding, look at the story that, that that's not told in that film. Yeah, but so you, um, I think you've seen it, Spence, because you really yes. are. Um, um, I personally think it would have been better to have cut the film at Trinity the Test. Uh, I think in tried to do two films, a bit like Dune, I think trying to compress it um, because it definitely had, but the first, I agree with you. I think you said you found you were a bit, um, peeved off with the first 10, 15 minutes. That is a bit all over the place, as far as I'm concerned. But what was your own thoughts about the film? I've been so worked up on the show already. I'm going to try to chill out. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I love going with friends to movies and different restaurants. The fun for me is not whether it actually ends up being good or bad or how good or bad. It's the process. Because in my third, almost third chapter of life, um, I enjoy the perspective I have of living things and experiencing things. And now I get to kind of compare it and it's fun. So I went with a bunch of my pickleball pals and so forth to see Oppenheimer. Barbie was playing next door. So because Oppenheimer (laughs) was starting a little later than we got there, I got to see the first 10 minutes of Barbie, which was, I didn't know what the rest is like. The first five minutes were interesting, but certainly lighthearted. And it wasn't really unpleasant to sit there and watch very attractive uh, people bounce around the stage for fun. But here's my problem with Oppenheimer. I've seen every Chris Nolan movie. Chris Nolan is one of the most divisive characters in movie making because of many of the same things we just talked about. His reputation 
is built upon breaking all of the conventions that filmmakers and cinematography fans have come to know. For example, I could test, I'll get three for three on this. In a movie filmed in color, when it suddenly changes to black and white, what does that mean? Anybody? I'm going back in history. Thank you. That's it. Color movie, black and white means you're going to pass. Not in Oppenheimer. Second of all, three-hour movie, the first 60 minutes, you would have been better going to Costco and doing your groceries because there's 26 characters in the movie, and he does not tell any information about any character so you would know who they are. Now, I'm a big fan of World War II and the Trinity and Oppenheimer and all the things Jeff referenced. I kind of figured out who people were. I was struggling because the first hour of the movie is like an acid trip, which, by the way, has something to do with the perspective of one of the characters, but not all of the characters. But then the second problem with Nolan movies historically, I wear hearing uh, aids, yeah. but I hear fine. Okay. I, I can have, there's no problem. My hearing is fully normal. <laughs> but when you go to his, a movie, when people are yelling at each other, doesn't the volume tend to go up with their, in Nolan movies, people are screaming at each other like this. Jonathan, you are such a motherfucker. Like Jeff Roman. And then all of a sudden, you're like, what? And then boom, an explosion goes off in your head. So you're trying to watch three hours of a movie where four stories juxtaposed between 26 characters where all the conventions of where am I at in the story and what time it is are mixed with like, trying to hear what they're saying while they're supposed to be yelling, and then suddenly explosions, not the Trinity bomb, go off. I came out of that movie feeling more stressed than if I had a triple espresso and tried to do my taxes with my ex-wife, okay? <laughs> I will not go to another one of his movies again because life is too short. And I want to compare it to a movie, for example, like The Right Stuff or Apollo 11 or... Saving Private Ryan, where normal storytelling took all of the details. And by the way, did cover multiple perspectives, like Jeff's saying, of the victims and the perpetrators and everything. And it told, it took me on a journey that I cared about and knew about the characters and I knew where I was in the story. And even Quentin Tarantino is able to juxtapose time and let me keep track of it. This Nolan is just sticking his thumb. But when you go on Facebook groups, half the people are like, this was life changing. It's the greatest thing I've ever seen. And the other half are like, did we see the same movie? Um, I think he, I think he was determined because the book that it's based on, he has kept it to the book. So, Kurt, did you see, have you seen the film or are you? No, I'll just go on record in this round table as saying I've lost patience for Hollywood's reimaginations. Right. So I'm, I'm just going. Just to finish off, folks, there's going to be a couple of little spoilers here. So if you're uh, you're planning to watch watch it, but um, I'm not going to go into too much. You, you I think, should watch it because, yeah. like, why not watch it? But it's like. I Maybe think I think I think, Jeff, I think Jeff's made some good points, um, especially about um, that's the strange thing. The actual perspective of the people that the bomb was dropped on is totally yet absent um the people that the land was taken away from them in new mexico they have no this, part of, of this it. wasn't a story about that though yeah, I'm not but, yeah. Was wrong. this is yeah. a story about lewis strauss and oppenheimer that's what it was about well it was about, it was about well, the, the political battle between lewis strauss and oppenheimer that's it. Well, in the I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. <laughs> exactly. Uh, um, I don't actually, I see where you're coming from, um, Spence, but I think the film, especially the, fir the first half, uh, the bit that got me was the um, the scene about him attempting to poison his lecturer, one of his um, Cambridge lecture, lecturers. Um, yeah. um, the truth it shows of, he had moral conviction. Well, the truth is much, a lot of the documentation was destroyed over that incident, but um, his um, attempt to do that was much more um, in-depth and much more pre-planned. Um, when you inject an actual apple with arsenic, um, 
And it cost his family a ton of money to get him out of that pickle. Um, literally, he, um, his father, who was extremely wealthy, had to co- go over to the UK and they had to cough up a ton of money to get him out of that pickle because he was up to it, up to his eyeballs, um, facing some serious charges. And he was a teenager at the time. <laughs> um he, he is a complicated individual, to say the least. Um, but that took a lot more uh, money and there was a lot more around that incident that is made out in the film. But there we go. Um, yeah. I think... Uh, so... Um, oh, the last story. Because um, it's the summer, I thought... Uh, uh, like I put into Twitter, uh, I'm a, I'm, I was tempted to give up on word. WordPress, uh, pink, pinky doll. Uh, um, sometimes something kind of hits you that I, I think society's collapsing, and I think I'm old. I, I, I just don't understand it. This this young lady kind of mimicking. I don't know what um, mm, she's kind yeah. of blown up in TikTok. So Jeff. Do you know much about Pinky Doll? And, uh, no, I do not. And I try and stay away from TikTok if I can. And uh, the ways that people make money today off of the the depravity of society is amazing. It's always been that way, though, isn't it? Yeah, I there's there's always uh, listen. There's there's an audience out there for people to buy clothes that other people have worn. Let's just put it that way. Uh, it's just, uh, it's, 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 it's a crazy look. There's a, I used to listen to a talk radio talk show, radio host. Uh, I'm, I guess I'm old cause I listen to AM radio a lot when I'm in the car. Uh, but he always said, I'm living in a world I don't understand. And every single day I get to, I have to say that at least once. So, Spence, I, I was totally um, seeing it, it's a mixture of kind of sexual annotation with gaming, but this lady, she's kind of doing kind of rapid movements. Mm, yeah, and, uh, yes. Yeah, mm. And I, I don't mm. understand it at all. Mm, yes. I, I just, mm. uh, yes. I, I, mm. I little, yeah, I'll do that all the time. Mm. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> mm. Mm, yes. Uh, uh, for, folks, if you could see Spencer's microphone, you would, uh, it's a poor thing. That's what she's doing. Yeah, I'm not she's sticking her tongue out and going, mm, yes, mm, and while she does other stuff, not anything sexual overtly, but just no. annoyingly. And seemingly she's getting an enormous audience about it. Can you understand it at all, Spencer? <laughs> yes. Do you remember in the early days of the internet, a thing called chat roulette? Yes. Okay, yeah. Jeff does. Maybe Kurt does. So uh, anyway, for us older guys, chat roulette was the first thing that came around. I remember it for all the wrong the reasons. End. Right. So there was a lot of spinoffs of it, but it was like anybody who goes to this website could push a button or just be there and somebody would show up randomly from somebody else who's connected. And then you could decide what to do. You could hit the button and leave or you could go, "Mm, yeah, mm," you know, whatever. And it became lots of various things. But there was also other sexual innuendo stuff in those days. The point is, if you if human beings ever go off into space there will be some spacefaring captain who's going to use the, the tools at his or her disposal to do the same crazy shit. Because we're all basically monkeys, like DNA modified monkeys. And we all go to our base instincts. And this person has figured out, not that dissimilar from the Catch Me Outside girl from Dr. Phil, who's now a hundred millionaire. Do you remember her? She was the one whose mom brought her on the Dr. Phil show because of her bad behavior. And she's like, yeah, catch me outside. And she became so famous that she started her own YouTube channel and now she has a clothing line. And <laughs> her, that's, that's how broken our society is. And it's the same society, by the way, as we started the show, where the, the, the minority speaker can stroke out and be like standing dead man. And they just push him aside and keep talking on the same day that it's announced that human beings have been involved with aliens and nobody says a word. We are so effed up as a society that it's hard to believe we'll ever escape our own problems. But this is, this is how it shows itself. So Kurt, Pinky Doll is supposed to be banking between, well, she was banking between 
two to seven, but they reckon with all this scarcity, it's good news for Pinky Doll. She's banking between ten and twenty thousand a week now. I, I don't even understand. <laughs> I think most things I can follow, but when this came on my radar, I have no idea why people... Well, apart from some of the more traditional things she does, I have no idea. Why aren't you doing it, Jonathan? I, I'm tempted, but I don't think there's the audience mm, for yeah. old English geezer sticking his tongue out. Um, but what... Do you follow it at all, Kurt? Or is, is it so outside your... You feel... I feel old... This is a chance for everybody to make fun of me because I am somewhat of a TikTok addict. Yeah. Um, but from the mind numbing experience of it, I think I get so involved in so much other stuff that like if I got to go pick up the kids at ice skating or something, I'm sitting there for half an hour. I'm just dead scrolling that thing, you know, um, but it's to to see what is popular, to see what gets the hits, to see what gets the likes and the shares. And it's ridiculous. And it's getting worse and worse and worse instead of better and better and better in quality. And so I can remember when we talked about the democratization of, of entertainment and coming off of network TV to cable TV to YouTube, we would say, oh, all these opportunities for really prime stuff that never got exposure to get exposure. And everybody got excited about it. everything's going to get better. And, and we look at it, we go, it just got worse. You know, and that's unfortunately a condition of of the human experiment. Yeah. I think that's well observed. So, you, what you're saying with decentralization is pinky doll. Unfortunately, unfortunately, when you get when you get a nice, uh, nice physical appearance, I'm going to say it as objective as I can, and you sing to popular songs in a way that's part of popular young person culture, you will accelerate that way too. I mean, there's a clean version of this conversation, like the kid who started uh, showing off toys on YouTube and his parents got involved. And now he's got like 17 channels and he brings in like a half a billion dollars a year just putting together toys, his parents, you know, Legos. That's how it works. People flip around channels. Like I go on YouTube just before I go to bed, I'm just looking at shorts and that's it. We're in that, we're in that world. Is it really surprising that an attractive woman with a nice figure who sings popular songs and does stuff with her hands and mouth is not going to be popular? I mean, that's, you know. Well, I could understand be, be that. The, the scenes I saw were linked to, you know, they were instructing her to do certain gaming movements. And I wasn't getting it. It's, I wasn't just, I just wasn't getting it at all. But there we go. Mm, yeah. But, yeah. I got a 15 year old that will watch other people play video games on YouTube for hours. If I don't interrupt him or the commenters on that, like the guys who remix, they take a video and there's this one kid who I swear I thought he was mentally struggling. Then he has like 4 million followers because he he's a kid from California comes from wealthy parents because he's been to his parents' house. He just watches videos and comments on like somebody making a brownie like, oh, and now they're putting the chocolate in the bowl. Oh my God, is that, are those chocolate chips? And he's got 4 million followers. He's probably bringing in there you go, Jeff, and it, a year. Uh, no, I, 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 Spencer, you would be awesome. I want to see you create a TikTok channel and all you do is reaction videos. I'm serious, you know, reaction to other uh, WordPress videos. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kurt, Kurt, you guys have the right. Here's what I want to explain. So there's a couple of people in our space who have done really well. They maybe have 125, 250, 300,000 followers. Guess what? WordPress in the business part of the world is great. That will never get you a fraction of the audience you need. You need to have some popular outside of it. So I would have to do it like, you know, something that everybody wants to see. But then I have a disadvantage because. I'm not really quite sure who wants to watch me go, mm, yeah, mm, yeah, it would have to be. You'd be amazed. Uh, um, so there, there, there and then go. you'd have to spend every day doing that. We, we need to end this show. I think we've broken every cultural rule in the book in this show. But there I we go. Think, I think yeah. we've gotten to the point where it sounds like everybody here just did the Tide Pod Challenge. There we go. <laughs> so, Jeff, so Jeff what's, what's the best way for people to find out more about you and what you're up to, Jeff? Uh, well, you can follow me on what used to be Twitter, but it's now Shitter, or just X, you know, depending on how you want to call it. Just follow me, Jeffro, J-E-F-F-R-0. And there I I tweet or I, I exit, yeet. I, I, I just post messages there, so. 
You can write this stuff, really, Jeff. Could you? You just can write this stuff. Uh, um, so, Spence, what's the? You know, I, I, I suppose uh, TikTok is the way to. No, actually, know? while the show is going on, I just got an offer come in. Um, I got an offer of employment at WP Tavern, signed by Matt, authorized. <laughs> I'm going to be the new co-writer with Sarah, giving a counter opinion to all. I demand a, a screen share. <laughs> <laughs> everybody it would, it would, it would live and feed everybody can, can, be ready, can take sure. anything they want with enough time but yeah I, I, most of the time you find me on the social handle of spencer foreman no e in foreman or wplaunchify.com when i'm not saying things controversially here with you your dad wasn't red foreman was he no uh red <laughs> fox was my father in vegas i do have a very funny red fox story one time but we were in Vegas gambling, you know, from Sanford and Son, you know, I'm coming to join you, Elizabeth. And he was at the end of his career. He was gambling next to us. He'd given the drink girl who brought the drinks a tip. He thought it was probably five or 10 bucks. It was a hundred dollar chip. He didn't have a lot left to lose. All of a sudden he looked down. He's like, where's my money? And we're like, Red, you just gave the drink girl a hundred dollars. And he went stone cold. And we're like, is this the big one? How are you going to go join? You know, but that was the last of him. Anyway, that's it. Oh, well, that's great. Um, <laughs> how can people find out more about you? What are you up to? Uh, anything with the name Manana Nomas on the internet pretty much leads to me. Uh, and then I'm the only Kurt Von Anden on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn almost every day. So if you want to connect there, that's a great spot. And thank you, audience and listeners, for joining us. Please share this episode on your social media, on your TikTok, wherever your poison is. It really does help the show. We'll be back um, next month with another great word this month in WordPress and tech. Um, this has been a fun show, a bit raucous. It is the summer. We will be back next month. We'll see you soon, folks. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening. We really do appreciate it. Why not visit the Mastermind Facebook group? And also to keep up with the latest news, click wp-tonic.com forward slash newsletter. We'll see you next time.